Praise the Lord, everyone. My, praise God. Let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord God, for showing up at, for such a time as this. We thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord, and we ask your blessing upon the word today. God, I thank you, Jesus, for my dependence and trust is in you. Bless the people. Bless the hearers of this word as well as myself. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, thank you. for all grace and mercy. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God is good. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I was uh, truly blessed in the worship uh, devotions. The first song was, You Are My Strength. And we need the strength of the Lord to do what we need to do. Amen. It don't matter how many of the tasks or how difficult, we need the strength of the Lord. And we especially need it when we feel weak or when we feel challenged or when we're going through. We need the strength of the Lord. I'm so grateful for having the opportunity to share the word again today. I hope it bless you. It blessed me. And um, the Lord told me to share with the body how that he want us to touch him so that we can touch others. Amen. He want to touch he want us to touch him and uh, I want to define that touch because I want you to do a little exercise. If you next to uh, next seated next to somebody, I want you to tap somebody next to you lightly. Just tap them. Not much effect, right? You just know they're there. All right? Now I want you to press your hand on their shoulder. A press. It's a little more intense, right? You feel them. You can feel whether they're warm. You can feel whether they're cold. You can uh, feel if they're excited, if they're uh, being tender, but you can feel the press, right? Now uh, what I want you to do is I want you to put some pressure. Take the arm with your hand and squeeze, put some pressure on it. Not hurt them, but just put some pressure. All right? It's, a little, it's more intense, isn't it? Than just a press and just a tap. Okay, well, the Lord made me to know that sometimes when we are touching God, sometimes we approach him and we give him a little tap. And, and sometimes that tap can be... Um, Lord, I need so and so and so. Lord, I want you to fix so and that's a tap. You're not really touching him. Okay? Then there's the, there's the press. When it's an effort on your part to press into him. Okay? Paul put it like this I press toward the prize of the mark of the call of God in Christ Jesus. So he had to press in. He had to press in the, through the trials. He had to press in through the, the difficulties, the persecutions. Um, he had to press. So he had to push his way through. And sometimes we have to press into God because we have difficult situations. We have circumstances that cause us to spend a little more time with God to get his attention. Okay, so that's a press. 
And then there's the pressure in our touching God. That pressure is putting your whole soul, body, and spirit into touching him. And this pressure is different because when you press in and you're leaning your whole personality and your dependence on him, guess what happens? He touched your back. Huh? You don't care how you look. You don't care what you feel like. I got to get to him. It's a little more desperation when you are pressured into getting something from him. Okay? So I want to demonstrate that through the word today. Um, I want to tell you a little bit something about human touch. Now, if the human touch can have effects on us, how much greater the touch from God? Okay? I'm, I'm going to define in a few minutes touch so we can get the impact. Well, physical uh, contact distinguishes us from other animals. Okay? From a, a warm handshake or a sympathetic hug to a congratulatory pat on the back, we have developed complex languages in our culture. We can communicate to somebody what we feel just by a touch. Amen? There was a test, a research that was done. It was some scientists that ran, that saw this little, uh, well, he was a 12-year-old boy, but when they saw him, they didn't know what he was because he was running through the forest. And they discovered that he had been there all his childhood. So he was more animal-like. And the scientists and the psychiatrists uh, discovered that this was a child that was deprived of touch, which had affected his emotional, his social and developmental capacities. He didn't have anybody to affirm him, to touch him, to love him, to stimulate him. And so he was more animal-like in his response to life. So touch is very important to the human development. Uh, it said that he was, uh, became nearly unrecognizable in the absence of touch. He, he, he was not even human-like. And that's amazing. And I, I'm a, I can imagine there are situations that happen to people in life that's not in their control that they don't uh, develop properly. Okay, the benefits of physical touch is it decreased balance. Less touch as a child leads to greater balance. Didn't know that. Less touch that a child receives causes him to be more balanced or aggressive. This was a uh, research, this was a study. The child developmental research illustrates that the absence of physical bonding and healthy attachments between um, an adult and child result in lifelong emotional disturbances. Amen. And we know that here, when we, ha we uh, receive healing from um, childhood hurts, abandonment and abuse, we found out that in the adulthood life of a child that grew up in those circumstances of rejection and abandonment, they are, they are pain. They are emotionally disturbed. 
and they respond uh, in anger, and anger leads from one thing to the other. Uh, the great deal of our society, children are more violent now than before. They don't have both parents in the home to nurture them, to uh, touch them, to make them feel secure, and, and make them feel like they belong. So they are less uh, violent when they receive love and the touch and the uh, human contact. Okay, another uh, benefit is a greater trust between individuals. Touch helps to bond people together. Can you imagine being in a relationship and never touch your mate or the, your significant other? Can you imagine what that must feel like? We need to touch because we need to know that that person is there for us, all right? Then there's economic gain because touch signals safety and trust Bakes it warm touch calms cardiovascular stress. You need the touch. We need to touch one another. And I think that's why in the living word, I think we are healthy in regard to the human touch because we do a lot of touching. We pat people on the shoulders. We embrace them. We, um, we even kiss them. You know, so people feel loved and they feel secure, but that touch, if you're in a stressful situation and some, it's even on the job and you say, uh, you seem to be stressed out about or under the gun or pressure of a circumstance on the job, and then somebody can come and pat you on the shoulder and it literally sends something to your body through your brain And it calms your body down. And I don't want it to bring out the scientific terms about the brain and the, the hormones that when somebody touch you, it sends off in the body. But it's a process that go on that uh, unbeknown to us, they have discovered these things in their research of developmental touch. Okay. Another benefit, human touch decrease disease and decrease disease and strengthens our immune systems. Hugs strengthen the uh, immune systems because of these hormones that the body uh, and the, the body chemicals that go to the brain. Okay, now. More, uh, number six, more non-sexual emotional intimacy, interpersonal touch has a strong impact on our emotions. I remember uh, Pastor saying one time, I think it was one of the girls, I don't know which one, and um, they were uh, either disturbed or troubled about something, and uh, they were crying, and so, he just took his arms and embraced them and just held them, and they calmed down. They needed that touch. They needed that hug. They needed that affirmation. Amen? So, husbands, sometime when, you know, your wife might be irritated, fussing, or whatever, don't try to defend anything. Just give them a big hug. Calm them down. All right? <laughs> Why is when your husband come home grumpy and then nothing you can say is right? Just hug him. Just give him a big hug and a kiss and honey, I love you. Amen. Calm him down. If something is taking place that you don't see. Amen. And number seven, the last one, is greater learning and um, en engagement. Kids that receive a pat on the shoulders from a teacher in a friendly way, those students are three times as likely to speak up in class. Just a proper motivation. 
It gives them security, okay? So now I want to define touch, and then I want to see how it um, pans out in the word. Touch is the act of touching someone or some, something. We all know that, right? And we demonstrated that with the press, a tap, and pressure. Um, touch means coming to or be in contact with someone or something. Or you can perceive, it's perceived by the sense of feeling. You feel the touch that is coming to you. So it's a perception that comes along with the touch. A singular noun is someone, if someone has a particular touch, they have a particular way of doing something, okay? If someone has a particular touch, they have a particular way of doing something. A countable noun says, a touch is a detail which is added to something to improve it. Hallelujah. Jesus, when he touches us, according to Luke 440, I'm going to read that. Luke chapter 4, verse 40. I'm almost there. When the sun was setting, all those who had, who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him, talking about Jesus, and he laid his hands on every one of them, and he healed them. Amen? So in order for him to lay his hands on them, he had to do what? He had to touch them. You know, and the definition was, a touch is a detail which, which is added to something to improve it. When Jesus touches us, he is improving the quality of our life. He has the power to change our situation. Amen. In this situation, he laid hands on not just one or two people, but he laid hands on a whole group of people. And he touched all of them. And he healed everyone. A touch is a powerful thing. Amen. Luke 5, 12 and 14. I want to read that. And it happened when he was in a certain city that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. And he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand, Jesus, and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Now, when you think of in the terms of uh, the old times and the biblical times, a leper was supposed to announce before he got around anybody that he was unclean. Nobody was to touch him, and they weren't to touch anybody. So this man saw, heard about Jesus' healing and that he would touch them, people, and they will be healed and they will become whole. So he took a chance. It, he took a chance. He, he didn't just tap on the Lord. He pressed into the Lord. And he said, when he got up to him, he, he, God Jesus knew he was a leper and that he wasn't supposed to have been around people. But he didn't have any 
lack of faith on his part to believe that Jesus could heal him. His problem was, would, would he be willing, knowing the ceremony a law concerning leprosy, if Jesus would be willing to heal him and to touch him? And Jesus' response was, I'm, I'm willing. And he lay, as he was saying, I'm willing, he was laying his hands on him. And they said the leprosy moved away from him. He was cleansed. He was made whole. So this leper had to touch Jesus with his faith through the obstacles that was surrounding his life. And our lives are like that sometimes. Sometimes we have to touch Jesus with our hurts, our wounds, our fears, our failures. We have to touch and press into Jesus and touch him so that he can change our situation. But it has to, we have to touch Jesus in a different kind of way. We have to touch Jesus with our faith. And the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him, but we can touch Jesus and draw something from him with our faith. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, okay. An example of Jesus touching someone and in, the, in return they are touching other people. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. He's challenging us to not only come and get healing and get some deliverance and, you know, get strength or, or, or pressures or yokes broken off our lives, but when we receive that, God want us to give it to somebody else. And, he, and th in his case, he told a leper to go to the priest and offer up a sacrifice because that was the custom during that time. But did he do that? No, he didn't. And, he t and Jesus charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them just as Moses commanded. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Amen? So, because Jesus touched him, the word got out. The word got out. It's just like the woman at the well when Jesus was talking to her. And because he met her at the point of her need, she went and told everybody in town, come see a man that told me all that I ever did. Jesus touched her, and she wanted others to be touched and to be blessed. That's the... The principle. Okay. Luke eight forty three. And we're familiar with this. The story. A girl restored to life and a woman healed. So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. Amen. There was some pressure there, right? He had a, a dire need, and so, you know, he was a little demanding, so much so that he was begging Jesus to come to his house. 
For he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Okay, can you imagine Jesus walking there, going on a mission, and all these people around and thronging him, trying to touch him? And, but in the midst of that, now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who has spent all her money, all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed. She couldn't be healed by any. Nobody could help her. And uh, verse 44, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? Now, can you imagine all these people? She didn't even touch his flesh. She just touched the hem of his garment. But this was a declaration she made. Sometimes when we want something from God and we want to touch him, we have to make a declaration within ourselves. In other words, you got to have a confident trust and a confident hope that the thing that you're asking God to do, that he will do it. This woman was probably weak from the issue, the flow. She had to press and, 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 and push and, and crawl trying to get to Jesus, but she made a declaration in her heart. See, it was her heart faith that touched the Lord. If I but touch, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'm, he, she just said I might be. All right, you know how we might, God might do it for us? No. She said, if I touch, I will be made whole. Amen. And it was that faith that touched and moved God. Amen. So, when Jesus asked Peter, uh, who touched me? When all, everybody denied it, I ain't touch you. I ain't touch you either. Peter and those with him said, Master, now, the multitude strong and pressing you, and you're saying, who touched you? All these people? But see, there was a different kind of a touch. Hallelujah. This touch drew some power out of Jesus. Amen. It's a touch that he could identify that something happened to him. Hallelujah. And so that's what we have to do in our walk with the Lord. When we're in circumstances, when we're sick or uh, we need healing or, or we need to overcome uh, uh, woundings in our soul, we have to touch Jesus in a way that it will draw something from him. You can't just tap him. So, Lord, I'm sick and I, I need for you to heal me. I, I know you're able, Lord. You know how we do. I know you're able. It's a difference in knowing he's able and knowing that he'll do it. Praise God. Drawing something, touching Jesus where he can touch you back and change your condition, change your situation. That's what we're talking about. Many touched him and were made whole, according to Matthew 14, 34, 36. Go there for a minute. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to put pressure 
on the Lord to get our needs met. Mark 14, 34. I'm sorry, Matthew. No wonder I couldn't find it. Okay. Okay, verse 34. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genezareth. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all that surrounding region, brought to him and all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch. Now, these people, they weren't expecting Jesus to go by and just tap them on the head. Okay, and they get healed. It was so many people. But they begged him. There was a different position when you're begging and you're wanting God to do something. It draws compassion for him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And then the word said, as many as touched it, they were made perfectly well. Amen. Sometimes, if you can't touch the flesh, you got to touch the next best thing. And sometimes that might be a, a man of God, a woman of God. Because the delegated authority that's given unto them as servants of God carry the same power. It carries the same power. Power because of delegated authority given to them from God. Amen? So sometimes we have to touch the man or woman of God with our faith, believing God for what we need. Amen? God is good. Touch is very important. And how we touch is extremely important. Matthew 9:25, I'm going to go there real quick. And I'll be after way shortly. Matthew 9:27. <laughs> Remember the two blind men? Yes. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him. Okay, now I want you to pay attention to how they were following him. They were crying out. Amen. Amen. And saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And I can imagine they didn't say it one time, but I can imagine they repeatedly said, have mercy on us. Why? Because they wanted to receive their sight. And when he had come into the house, the blind man followed him in the house. So they went out of the comfort zone. And sometimes when we want to touch God, we have to get out of our comfort zone. Most of the time. We have to get out of our comfort zone. And um, they followed him into the house. The blind man, men came to him. And Jesus said to him, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said to him, I think so. I hope so. Huh? You know, Lord. But no, their response was, yes, Lord. I know you're able to do this. Amen. Sometimes we got to stretch out even when we don't see it. And even if our situation to us seems so out of reach and impossible, when we face Jesus and talk to him about our situation, we better know that we have to have a yes on the inside to get something from God.
I remember being in a very dire situation. My first husband left, and y'all might have heard me tell this testimony, but it was far-reaching for me. I, I couldn't see no way. And things were pressing on me to uh, make arrangements for his funeral. And this one day, I was in my living room. I had all this pressure on me. My children didn't know what I was dealing with, what I was facing, what the situation was. So I was there. And I was in my living room, and my little granddaughter at the time was Layla. She's in here somewhere. But anyway, I began to call on the Lord. But the Holy Ghost made it different for me because he undergirded me where I could have the strength to ask God for what I needed. To tell him where I was and what I needed for him to do. And as the, I was praying to God, I literally felt that the heaven had opened up. And I know it opened up for this reason. The very day Sister Tyson came to my house and Gay wrote me a check for $1,000. I got a telephone call a little later from a lady that used to work with my husband and politically in the campaigns and the voter registration and stuff. And she said, have anybody from the city got in contact with you? That lady took it upon herself got in contact with the city officials, and they arranged the funeral. They committed their services. I didn't have to do anything. They did the programs. I didn't have to do nothing. But I'm saying, when you call on God and you touch him with faith, now, don't get the idea that I touch God with faith like that all the time. <laughs> I want to make it clear. But I'm just telling you, I did experience that. <laughs> that was a pressing time. But the point is, God met me. And he answered from heaven because I didn't communicate with nobody my situation but him. And he rewarded it openly. So I'm saying that we have to touch God with faith and when we declare something, we better understand what we're declaring and then expect it to come to pass. See, you, you, Jesus, I remember one time I was praying and I don't know, of some burden or something I, was, something I was dealing with. And I remember praying, wanting God to do something. And I was just weeping and crying, all emotional. The Holy Spirit stopped me, and he said, faith moves God. And I thought about it. It wasn't my crying and wanting his pity and Want him to be, show me some mercy. That wasn't moving him. What was moving God was faith and his ability to do something about my situation. And so, sometimes uh, Jesus will try our faith. Because he tried, it doesn't mean that he's discouraged you from uh, attaining what you're asking him for. But a lot of times, he is testing you to see how, if you're really believing him to do it. Amen. And then this, these things that come up, sometimes it's hard to believe and touch Jesus because our perceptions are damaged. Now, people let us down so much in life that it's hard to trust. Amen? We're damaged by our experiences in life. 
Many times we have trust issues because of relationships that we had that was disappointing and unreliable. So that has interferes with our faith, but once we get the faith thing right, we can touch God, and he'll work on our behalf. Now, you know what? We have to get to the place when we're touching God and we're wanting to do something so that we can allow him to be glorified and how he's glorified that he can help others receive the same benefit. Amen? And so what we do as believers, including myself sometimes, I'm guilty, God bless us, and he do something great, and you know what? We don't tell nobody anything. How they going to know God is good? How do they know God is able? If God is no respect to person. What he do for me, he'll do for you. But we won't tell nobody. So we have to go back to those perceptions. You know, when I first came to the faith and I got in touch with Jesus, I believed God for everything. I didn't think nothing was impossible for him, that he could do anything. And if he didn't do it, it was because he chose not to do it. Didn't have anything to do with me. You know what I mean? Somewhere down the road, I lost that. But it's coming back. It's coming back. Because, see, my expectation then was not so much on this life. It was more on trying to get to the kingdom, trying to get to heaven, huh? trying to have faith when Jesus come back. See, that's what I was focused on. Uh, I was told I was so uh, heavenly minded, I won't know earthly good. I wish I was like that now. I wish my mind was out of this world. Man. Press means to bear down on and lean on. Sometimes we have to pester the Lord. We have to be persistent. You know how you, you keep coming, somebody keep coming to you and you wish they would go away? And they keep coming until you say yes or no? And then once you say no, they keep coming? Persistent faith, right? Or then you have a person that just trouble you down on your heels until you do something for them. Sometimes we have to get that way in our faith with the Lord. We have to bug him. Like the, uh, Jesus um, talked about the unjust judge. He was so persistent. He said, I've got to do something for this person unless they weary me. You know, Nobody want to be weird and, and, and weird to death and somebody, every time they turn around, here they come. And you can't duck and dodge them all the time because every way you look, they're there. <laughs> and so it's beneficial to you to go ahead and uh, give them what they want so you can get rid of them, right? You know how children do their parents. They keep bugging them to, you promised me, so you hadn't done it, so I'm going to keep coming. Uh, Daddy, uh, Mommy, you told me you were going to do so and so and so. Okay, babe, I'm going to get to it. They'll wait over a little while and they come back. Well, Mama, when are you going to do so and so and so? Don't bug me. I told you I was going to do it. <laughs> they go back. You know how little kids do? But they don't forget, you made a promise. You said you were going to do it. If you weren't going to do it, you shouldn't have told me. <laughs> and then we get mad with them. Boy, get out of my face. 
and they'll still come back. <laughs> Daddy, you, 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 you think you can do it now? <laughs> yeah, come on, let go. <laughs> oh, my God. Touch means move or cause to move into a position of contact with something by exerting continuous physical force. You remember when the disciples were on the Sea of Galilee and in that region, storms just pop up. They just pop up from anywhere. And uh, Jesus was down in the stern of the ship. He was asleep. I imagine touching all those people he was tired. And I can imagine he was in a real deep sea on the ocean and the water is going and boy, he just getting into it. So all of a sudden the storm come up and it's temperance. And um, <laughs> the, uh, y'all must like me over here. Um, <laughs> the boat is rocking, the waves are, oh, uh, falling over the ship and they, uh, they, they trying to hold the ship together and everybody's up there working, trying to take control so that they wouldn't go shipwrecked and Jesus is down there snoring. He ain't moved. He ain't heard the thunder and the lightning because he was tired. But all of a sudden, Peter, I'm going to show you two illustrations. I can imagine Pete and Peter didn't want to disturb him, so he go down there. Tapping. Jesus didn't answer. So he's saying, God, I hate to disturb him, but if we don't do something, we're going to be shipwrecked. We're going to all drown and die. So then he go back. Jesus, 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 coming up out of that sleep. Uh, what's going on? It's a storm and we're about to perish. Jesus gets up out of sleep, yawning, tired. He get up on, on the top. Did he see the storm? He said, peace be still. And he go back. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the pressure from Peter trying to touch Jesus so he could change his condition. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. <clears throat> pressure sometimes of life and circumstances will cause us to get into a position to um, contact, to come in contact with something by exerting continuous physical force. Sometimes we feel like we're not getting through in prayer. And sometimes we have a tendency of give, giving up, but our circumstances dictate that, look, I got to get through. And so when you get like that, even though you don't feel nothing, even feel like there's a wall between you and God, I tell you what, faith will move him into your situation. Faith will bring that wall down, and before you know it, you're breaking and crying. And God, when you start breaking and crying, that's because he walked into your situation. To change it for your good. God is faithful. Saints, we can touch Jesus through our situations, our circumstances, our pain, our fears, our failures, our frustrations, our rejections, our abandonment, our abuse, our painful memories. We can touch God. 
because Jesus is a faithful high priest. And he said in his word that he's touched with the feelings of our infirmity. And in other words, he identified with us. Now, you are not going to go to somebody you can't identify with, that can't identify with you. You know, you ain't going to somebody that you tell them your problem, they say, oh, well, that's just tough. <laughs> you ever been to uh, talk to somebody and tell you something like that? Well, that's just tough. <laughs> Man, I'm so glad for Jesus. Oh, Lord. God wants us to press in. Now, this is a pressing time. The circumstances around us dictate that we got to press into God to get our answer. We got to press into God to know what we should and should not do. We got to touch Jesus, not in a nominal way, but in a persistent manner so that we can get his attention, that he can change some of the things that are around our lives and around our communities. Amen. Because God. He's still God, and he's still in control. But who do he work through? Who do he work through? He worked through us, individually and collectively. That's why every one of us is important to the kingdom of God. It ain't about our accomplishments. It's not about our degrees. It's not about our lack of degrees. It's, it's about the kingdom business because we have the king living on the inside. And we minimize him just to our lifestyle. But the kingdom is greater than our lifestyle. I think Jesus, the word says, seek ye first the kingdom and all these other things shall be added unto us. It's not that God don't want us to have things. He's proud and, and he's more than willing for us to because he get glorified when we're blessed. He don't get no glory when we're in poverty. That don't glorify God. He don't get glory when we weak and frail and don't feel like we can make it. That doesn't glorify God. He get glory when situations look impossible and we can still stand and declare the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And if he don't change situation, which he can. But if he don't, he need to know that you're still going to be a soldier in the kingdom of God. We're going to have to raise our expectations beyond this natural realm. That's for me. We got to do it. Because there's Kingdom of darkness is advancing. And the subtlety of the enemy is causing the church not to come together. He said, where two or three come together in my name, I am in the midst. He didn't say nothing about the airways. I can't feel no anointing. Nothing wrong with it. As long as the gospel is going out, that's true. But it still takes two to come together for him to be in the midst. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hebrews 4.14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, not Muhammad, not Confucius. I don't hear nowhere where they uh, passed into heaven. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize, another translation, that cannot be touched with our infirmities. And this translation says, sympathize with our weaknesses. He can identify with our sorrows. He can identify with our pains. And not only does he identify, but he's in a throne. He's in a place where he can get things done. Yes. And then he tells us how to come to him. See, uh, Faith believes and have a confident trust that God is able to do what I ask him to do along as it's according to his word. It don't mean that it's going to happen like that all the time. There is a now faith. But then there's some faith that God has to process us through. Amen? So it's not always instant. Praise the Lord. He sympathized with, with uh, our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. And that was my point. We can come boldly. We can come with expectation. Uh, we don't have to come with condemnation or guilt or fear because that's not going to get us anywhere. But we come in full assurance that what we ask him for, we know that he'll do, and we have the thing that we ask of him. That's faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to conclude. The Holy Spirit impressed upon my spirit. It is time for the Living Word family to touch Jesus like we have never touched him before. Pressing into him beyond our feelings, who we like and don't like, until he touches us back. Amen? He has invested in our lives for years. It is now time to let him touch others through us. You see, this Jesus, the Son of Man, in his uniqueness as human and divine, brings sinful men to a holy God. And see, that's what the gospel is all about. It's about God bringing sinful men into his kingdom and to his marvelous light so they can have the benefits of his goodness and his mercy. Amen? That's what God wants. You know, we have to have a change of mindset from just coming to church and hearing a nice sermon and getting, you know, our praise on. Hey! Glondo Robosha! Hallelujah. We got to change. Because we got to see the bigger picture now. Everybody can get a prayer through. You know, we talk to people about situ circumstances, but we need to talk to God about the circumstances and help him deal with the people. We don't need to be worrying God about people. 
He told us to pray one for another. He didn't tell us to confront nobody, fuss nobody out. He told us to humble yourself. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Wait on him to work it out. Amen. We're going to have to touch God in this season and trust him with our life. Amen. I'm not fussing. It's for me too. I'll be the first partaker. I need this. I need this word. He has invested in our lives for years. You see, this Jesus, the Son of Man, and his uniqueness, I already read that, in his perfect holiness of life, Jesus reflects a compassion for sin, stain, and suffering man. Brokenhearted, sick, mistreated, and bereaved, the great, the great Commission is about Jesus touching us, and then we, in return, we touch others with the compassion and sensitivity that Jesus touched us with. When we came to Jesus in our mess, with all our faults and failures. He didn't beat us down. He didn't condemn us. He didn't judge us. He accepted us. Right? He loved on us. He showed us a more excellent way, a better way of living, a better quality of life. And so that's what he wants us to give to others. Hope. Hope. If Jesus did it for me, brother and sister, he can do it for you. Amen. Amen. I'm done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know what kind of time we have. All right. Praise the Lord. You know, um, we often come up to the altar and we sing, I surrender all. But are we really, if we're honest with ourselves, are we really surrendering all? Are we really, do we have a right perspective on kingdom, the kingdom of God and what it's all about? Because when we do, we're going to touch other people's lives. Let's touch somebody this week. Let's get out of our comfort zone and tell somebody that you know that's hurting or going through a situation, look, I got an answer. And that answer Changed my life. God sent two, to pe two people to my door because I asked him and I'd give my life to you and he did it. He did just that. He sent them to my door. I got saved in my apartment, uh, kneeling at my sofa, and Jesus Christ came into my life. I have not been the same.
That was in 1975. September 1975. God wants to change us. He want to help us. He want to build us so that we can help and build other people. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand. If there was anything that was said, first of all, is there anybody here that have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Anybody? Everybody say, I'm not asking this question. Lord, I thank you for these. I will and I ask you to help us, and Lord, I to see are we being effective be in your same. kingdom. If our life in you has touched others' lives and they've changed and they're serving you, Lord, you. then we're doing well. But if our life hasn't touched another life and they're saved, then we need to come back to the, the altar. Lord, in your precious name, we ask you to make us better servants. We ask you to Straighten out our reasonings. Change our mindsets. And then give us the grace to serve you more excellently. We ask this in Jesus' name. For in you, Lord, when we are saved, there is no condemnation to them in Christ Jesus. But God, we all can improve. We can all come up a little higher. So, Father, we are asking you to bring us up a little higher. In Jesus' name I pray. And let your blessings and your peace be upon every heart. In Jesus' name. And every heart say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Larry. With my faith, I will touch you. My Amen. We thank the Lord for the word of God. Time of soul searching for the word. And um, there's not a lot I can add to that at all. <laughs> but it was really God speaking to our hearts. Staying right with the words, with the subject that he gave her, touch. So, uh, while I was sitting there, he did say to me that um, several are going through certain difficult situations, and but in these difficult situations, he want to break through. But in order for him to break through, just what she was seeing. He wants us to touch him with our faith. And we're not talking about getting a breakthrough for a brand new car. <laughs> not 
I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about a spiritual where Satan is standing in the way of our spiritual progress. And it seems like we can't can't break through. And uh, I believe it's on that line that we're not to be discouraged and feel defeated, but we are to touch him. He's got the power. He's the God of the Bible. So I just wanted to add what God was saying. Some situations seem so impossible, and they are to us. They are to us. And um, so I'm just going to take a moment and everybody know where you you are. What is this situation that seems insurmountable? What is it that seems like no matter how, what you say or do, it just won't seem to go away. It just seems bigger than bigger than anything you're able to um, deal with. If you were, if you feel that way, and you're facing something, it just seems like you can't make headway. You can't make that spiritual progress, and that's what he's saying. I want you to touch me. Not only will he do the impossible, but because of the timing, people can't see God if we don't touch him. And I received that word for myself. I don't know if you're here right before we conclude. If you feel like I don't have a great prayer life, I don't. I, but like the woman with the issue of blood, she was desperate. With the deposit that He has deposited in you, you can touch Him. You really can if you determine. If you're determined and make that a priority, I've got to get an answer from God. Take a moment and come. Someone is at the altar now to touch God. Just step right where you are out of your seat. But be determined. And let God anoint you afresh like he did my wife when she was praying he anointed her to pray for the need that she had and God will anoint you but he did say there was people here that it's like he needs us to touch him we're right where you are with what you're going through and uh, if, if you if you acknowledge that you're one of those I want you to stand with me. Others, you may be seated and we're going to pray a prayer of faith that God will help us to stir us and anoint us like he anointed her for that task. And she had supernatural help from God and God wanted to work a miracle and he worked that miracle for her. You need a miracle today. God sees and he knows. Thank you, Father.